Hello, everyone. Welcome from all of you from your way and the people that are here first time. This is the third time that we're going to spend the night together and you're going to find out more about how to build your strengths and why you, the people that are walking a lot and are doing, making your the condition, why you should, in my opinion and in opinion of my friends and um and in the round of the area that I work as an expert for 12 years, why breathing is so important. The strength is the ability, uh, and I will prove that today. And this is like a math geography at school, so everyone uh, should learn it. And my students are the proof of it, and I myself, I am the proof of it. And I will talk about it a little bit later. And I would like to know if you can tell me who is the first time today, if you can write it down in a comment. If you are on a second live tonight, please pre uh, type in number two. And if you can write it down number three, if you're here on a third live today, it's very important for me to find out what we should do tonight. So it, it will help me to find out if we can go ahead with the progress of it and uh, um, or we should just go back to the things that we've already discussed. And on the beginning, I would like to tell you tonight that we're going to have another session, the fourth session. So we're going to have the chance to to um, talk again. So we have some comments in the chat so tonight we're going to go back a little bit but to what we've uh, discussed uh, earlier on the previous lives. So people that are here first time, do you remember what is the control pass? If you, if yes, please type in yes in the chat. One second, there are some technical difficulties. There you go. Okay. Okay. So who am I? For the people who doesn't know me for 11 years, I uh, my passion is when it comes to kettlebell training. And again, with... Um, building my strengths. I'm one of the ace instructors when it comes to strongest elite in Poland and I am one of the 78 people around the world that has a title of the best beast teamer title. So I am the third person in the world when it comes to uh, the best um, results when it comes to uh, the kettlebells and not only the, the way of how to um, press them. So I was not always like this. And my friends in school, the, the girls in school were better than me when it comes to strengths in primary school. I was very good when it comes to teamwork and team um, sports, when it comes to roller skates and, and stuff like that. I was never a person that was close to the gym. When I was 18, I decided to change that. And when it comes to the world kind of famous, uh, I am one of the ones in Poland that I'm doing the training around the world and in Poland. So, and together with my partner, we have opened also the Kettlebell Training Centers in Warsaw, Wroclaw, and the main cities. And we have over 150 clubs like that. And we're a leadership when it comes to the kettlebells and the quality of the kettlebells training in them. Why is it important to um, keep up with your strengths? And why is it important to, to be good in, in, in sports? Because it's up to you. Um, uh, you decide if you're going to leave one track behind you or two tracks behind you like on the picture in front of you and it, if you're gonna keep up with the strength and keep up with your fitness where to be fit 
today I'm going to obviously give you the knowledge how to and what not to do when it comes to to not to end up on the picture on the left hand side. I would like to show you my um, the change that I've been through. How did I looked when I was in age 15 and on the right hand side, how do I look in the age of 30? Small difference, right? Now, our appearance is only the accidental uh, way of, you know, that we should not be focused on. Our instructors, females instructors, does not look like this. It's closer to them, to one of the athletes, but not as to the strong, uh, you know, elite, I would say. I believe that every form of movement is good. You walk a lot. You're people that are doing at least 10,000 steps a day. Today, I know that Monica is with us, that is doing way more, that is, she's doing over 20,000 steps. Every movement is good. Why do I think it's that it's worth to build up your strength uh, when it comes to push-ups or uh, squats and not only, not necessarily with, you know, the, the kettlebells or so on? It's important that you could start it with mass of your body, with the with the weight of your body. It's important in your life, especially with the women's, that you know. Very often, you have two kids on your arms. Underneath, you have the water bottles. Underneath the trolley, you have the six packs of beer for your husband, and she is doing all all that with you pushing the door um and she has around more or less 30 kg of weight around it and it's good obviously to do it for example with you know the celebrities um athletes that you do it um with them the training with them to, but then you go with your kids and you have, you know, the weight of 30 kgs around you. So my purpose is that my students will have during the trainings kind of hard enough. So in your day-to-day -day life, you, it will be easier for you. There's no shortcuts, guys. Time will pass and we will not speed up the process of, you know, training or fitness or getting fit. Um, when I... When it comes to the um, our training, we put a strong um, kind of fist when it comes to the nerve system, and it's and your nerve system is helping you, um, but it takes a little bit more time to get involved whole of your body, so we cannot go very fast. So it's not like that, uh, you know, the New Year's resolution that you're going to the gym five times a day, a week. And in February, you're going to go three times. And in March, you just don't care anymore because you are working on your muscles and your nerve system was too forced too much. And your body is saying, and your mind is saying, no, uh, walking, no, mm, anything that it comes to fitness, no. So my way of teaching says that the strength is on the first, um, I would say, you know, the, the most important, but in a way that you won't be forcing your body too much. I've forbidden to my students to go to, to force themselves too much. Obviously, it goes, you know, more and more when it comes to the time. So, and they're doing, obviously, with the time, a more complicated tra training. So, you cannot really build up your strength like this with a click. It takes me a lot of time to get my uh, results like I have now. So, the nerve system needs more time than your muscles to develop. Why is it important? Because us, uh, through our nerve system, we are forcing 95% of our muscles every single with every single movement. There is no such way that we are going to the gym on Monday 
international way of building your biceps and triceps and stuff like that. So you do the upper body fourth day, it's your back, and the Friday, it's it's your legs. In our place, on every training, we are uh, pushing every single muscle to move. For example, we are doing a little bit more um, um, kind of um, heavy weights, but less push-ups. But for example, for every single move, we are um, forcing every single body to, every single muscle to move. Because to in one hour, we can uh, burn from 500 to 900 um, calories. And the, the people that are having the best results are showing that 900 calories are able to uh, burn in, uh, in, uh, in an hour. But uh, before the, your breathing will go back to normal and your, and your uh, saturation and so on, you're burning way more. So I can risk the definition that the strong kettlebell training can burn up to over 1,000 calories per hour. If you're doing your steps and you have your, your Fitway app, then it shows your results. So you can tell me how many steps and how much times you need to burn 1,000 calories. Or if you're burning 1,000 calories, how many steps do you do? And I'm very curious about that. So if you can let me know in the chat or find out from your app, how is it? And what's characteristic when it comes to my um, training, strength training, is it's the difference of the mechanic train, training. Something that it was not really good Mm, and that uh, will give you a lot of uh, medals on the Olympics because the, their trainers um, told them to do the same movement. So your head, instead of uh, lifting the weight from your ground, is supposed to think to, uh, supposed to think about your legs already. So. Imagine that, that you're not lifting the kettlebell from the ground, but when you're holding it, your task is to push your uh, legs to the ground so the body will get straight. So um, it will give you more dynamic uh, movement and more um, strength, more or less than 20, 30,000 percent. Sorry. So the... So, for example, first I'm doing the knees, then the legs, and then go back, as you can see on a picture. After the webinar, I can show you, I can send you exact um, uh, movements. If you don't know of this, if someone doesn't know this, this um, task, will really um, not be able to do that in, in a good way. So the red ball, kettlebell, as you can see, is um, is pressed to the ceiling, but I cannot let it go down as it has such much power. So that gives me a little bit more force to my court and so on. And it, it makes me more coordinated and it gives me more, um, I would say, coordination to the kettlebell. So, um, as you can see, the kettlebell should be on your forearm on from the outside of your body. And no one actually thinks uh, about the lifting and pushing the, the kettlebell. But I think of it more as a lifting up than pushing. If you want to find out what's the difference when it comes to those two trainings, you can easily do it in a two different way. The first way is you to take your legs um, a little bit farther apart and lift your arms up and see how many um, muscles, parts of the muscles are working. And then the second way of doing it, uh, think of it that you are pushing off 
the seating that is falling on your head and um, with obviously kettlebell. So you're going to see the difference between two ways of that lifting. So why kettlebells? The kettlebells that are made in a professional way that we are, you know, promoting it in Poland for 15 years, the, the force is to move it in a ballistic system. So it's basically like a wave movement. And why is it important and so crucial? At the end of this presentation, I will show you the movie uh, that you're going to see the swing uh, of the movement of the kettlebell, the ballistic kind of way of uh, kettlebell movement. None of the movement is... Um, least invasive for your back pain, for your back. So, for example, if the kettlebell is uh, way, the weight of kettlebell is 24 kg, and you are pushing it to the back, so between your legs, be, be, between your bum, okay, and again, you're swinging up for 24 kg, and when you're going up, because of the movement, it doesn't waste anything. And then you're going very dynamically with your triceps muscles down. So this kettlebell even weights 50 kg then because of that movement. And between one and a half seconds, you have different amount, different weights that are working on your back muscles. So then it looks like 24, 0, 60, and it goes in a wave. And that makes the very, very fast and uh, strengthening the, the back pain of your body. And then you can get rid of, of your back, lower back pain, which is unfortunately the sickness of the people that are sitting in their cars, sitting in front of their desks, where the, the backs is in unnaturally bent. So our, for example, muscles of our bum, so the muscle, the, the glutes muscles of your of our bone are the more the strongest one basically. So whenever they are tightened, your back, lower back muscles are loose. So they are taking all of the work for our lower back muscles. So for example, the walking on the stairs, it's the best one to um, make your uh, the glute muscles uh, bigger. So whenever you're doing the swing motion of the kettlebells, it's very fast that you can grow your um, those parts of your uh, muscles, and you can feel the tiredness of those parts the next day and so on. But really, the 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 funny thing is that. The people that were on our trainings for five year, years, for example, and they came back just because because they had the back pain, lower back pain problem. So they came back to me for treatment, not for the training. That's what I said before. On our training, we don't push ourselves to our limits only when we are building the condition kind of, but we are building the strength, two, three, five mm, sets of those, for example, trainings, and then we are resting. We are not going into 10, 15 sets, the repetition sets, because more movement, then obviously your quality is lower. So the ballistic movement, the swing movements, for example, if you're doing 15, let's say, you are doing only the way, that, the, the amount that you're able to do it in 100% with 100% uh, of your body. So for example, it's, it's really, it doesn't make any sense to do it more if you're not able to um, do it with the full strength of your body and muscle uh, movement. So, for me, it's more important that you're going to be less than more. So, not forcing too much, obviously, equals that you're not going to get any condition or any, you know, problems. If you are starting to have um, the shortness of breath, and on the training, it's very possible that you might... <laughs> Mm 
whenever you're breathing and you have the shortness of the breath, there's no way for you to do the perfect movement with the kettlebells. You're not able to generate the strength. So as a coach of breathing coach, and the two sessions that we had before was uh, really um, um, based on that, I know that it's the most important thing that you are going to know how to breathe properly and for you to not to have the shortness of breath and your muscle um, strength of your breathing muscles will be uh, good. In my presentation, you saw this picture that the tracks be for behind that you're going to have. <laughs> Okay, the process of losing your um, body, uh, mass of your body, the body weight. Let's not go too deep into bi bi biology. Um, more older we are, obviously, we are losing more muscle um, weight. So that we don't have strength. We get tired very often whenever you're going uh, up the stairs. Obviously, it's getting more difficult. Even to 10,000 steps, it takes a little bit longer to do it. So, for example, you have to do more uh, breaks in between. You don't have the such coordination when it comes to the, you know, your... And so energetic system doesn't um, work that well. And the problem of your balance as well comes in. If you have someone older in your family, whenever we are doing this strength training, it we stop kind of this a system, this unfortunate a way that we're getting older and we can get it even uh, kind of longer. We can extend our um, living. So, the, you know, the way your body is getting flat, like a flap and everything. So we're doing, whenever you are doing the lifting and strength training, that gives you the benefits. Whenever you're doing the, the interval training, or for example, the celebrities training, the very good thing is that you're gonna obviously get sweaty, you're gonna have a, a great shape of your body and you're gonna have the, you're gonna lose weight. And unfortunately these days, the, the weight is very important and the best proportion of your muscles to your fat will be the best, the BMI. But it's not that your uh, scale is telling you uh, what kind of way you should live and, and puts you in a good or bad mood. So in, in that process, the the okay the fat um, cells for example if I would stop training uh, now at all I would get um, a bit you know my fat tissue will go, grow but then I will go back to my uh, mass if we were training of our strength, for example, my left arm says about, for example, you're doing the crossfish and then you're doing the strength and my right arm shows you um, the level of the strength. So whenever the mass of your body gets, it's less, it's smaller, your strength gets smaller. So for example, the people, the athletes, stops working, training for one month, it starts from the very bottom again. Whenever he was doing 330, uh, when it comes to, for example, per kilometers, he's going down up to 314, uh, up until the time that he will develop again his strength again. So whenever we're building our strength, 
we are obviously um, with building of our strengths, our immune and, and our system, defense system is growing also to the, regenerate our muscles. So you're going back to the training every day with a lower level, but then you're going again during the training to the top. And additionally, because apart from the breathing um, the workouts, I have built a, a platform where we train in the first week, for example, the trainings are very light. The second one is more or less so-so. And the third one, you're doing a heavyweight. And, and I uh, recommend to uh, give up all the supplements like carotene, antioxidants, and so on in the third week because... It, it's important for me that in a very strong training, when I give my body a lot of stress, he, I would like to my body to adjust and it will give, uh, hit, you know, the, the boost by itself, not by the supplements. Because obviously your muscles are in pain of, of from the training sometimes, and it gives you the stress, the oxidant stress also. In the third week, we don't, for example, do, you know, the, the cold um, baths. Um, because that obviously is not very good for your, again, muscles and strength. In the very first two weeks of the training, I do the cold, for example, showers and cold baths, which gives, again, your body, um, your body is regenerates in the cold water faster. And the four, last fourth week is... I go back, I go from 95% of the weight up to 50 and I do it very, you know, loose and very cool. And I just do it in a cycles of, you know, six to eight, not more because people that are training every and adding more and more weight, every training, it's always end up with the contusion or, you know, out of training. So I uh, do basis of, mm, and I do it 12 years, uh, you know, as an expert. And I would like you to remember one thing is that the strength is knowledge and your nerve system, if you're going to talk your nerve system to be um, to even, um, um, you know, tight your fingers and uh, feet fingers and your every muscle in your body. And then it connects to your brain, to the immune system. More we're going to force uh, to um, uh, strengthen your, strength your muscles than it helps us to build more uh, strength. So I want the people uh, to re that did the control pause with me last time to write it down in a chat. So for example, Peter wrote down that two and a half thousand uh, steps, he's doing 500 um, calories. So for example, uh, the difference is obviously, and uh, calories that we mentioned before. So the control buzz, and we're going to do a warm-up uh, before your next walking session training. So before you're going to do your um, training, uh, two hours after your meal, you could do this um, uh, workout. And this workout will help you not to get your shortness of breath. Because when you're going to guess the shortness of the breath, you can do this uh, exercise again to get back to the 100% um, of functionality. So it will go away. So control pause is the 
it's your score that tells me about your condition, your health, and uh, if you are breathing by yourself or by three or four people. Okay, so for those of you not know, the control pause, you're going to find out people that don't know, you're going to learn. Also, the control pause is whenever you're sitting down, okay, with your back on your chair, So the diaphragm, it's not this, it doesn't give the stabilization you know, to your body, okay? So your task is to get your arms along your body and sit down very, you know, comfortable. You're going to do the breaths with your nose. So breathe in with your nose, breathe out with your nose. Not obviously, you know, forcing it, just normally the way you're breathing. Breathe in and breathe out the way you're doing it every day. Breathe in, breathe out, and then you're gonna breathe out and you're gonna keep your nose shut and you're checking your timer. How many seconds you're gonna stay like this without breathing up into the first hunger of taking the breathe breath? And that my um. And how do you know that it's you are in that moment? You're gonna guess the your back gonna guess uh, a little bit more tight, and then uh, you can swallow your saliva, or that means that it is too long for you. So it's it's very good to stop at this time because the finishing up the control path is whenever you're gonna. Let go of your nose. The first breath will be quiet, invisible, and unhearable. Whenever you have the the way the samurais are doing it, whenever are they are doing, um, they're putting a feather all on under the nose, and um, samurais are breathing the way that the feather won't move. So we're gonna start to do the same <laughs> okay <laughs> anyways so you can feel your um fingers on your on your hand on your finger so this will be very quiet breathing you should not feel on your finger that you're doing in the breathing Halina wrote to down that she has 35 seconds of the control pause which is very good score. And I believe that she was doing everyday steps and every day the control pause as well. So the control pause goes up three to four seconds a month. If you're training a lot, breathing a lot, and you're doing it in a correct way, we can get this pro all this process my guess um <laughs> better obviously don't uh, think of it of, of this course of different people let's do it now together just relax sit down put your uh, back um on the chair rest breathe in breathe out with your nose you can close your eyes because the, the eyes are taking 40 percent of the energy of uh, of the your nerve system so you can close up your eyes so you can focus on this exercise and this time breathe in, gentle breathe out to zero and hold your nose, checking the timer. Remember, up, up until the first hunger and then breathe in gently and slowly. So my score is 30 seconds. Let me know in the comment what was your score because today I'm going to show you the training, the warm-up exercise for it, uh, as well. And the length of this 
um, exercise will obviously be uh, declared by the, your scores in the comments. So we're going to need the, um, the scores of your control pass to get Twenty seconds by Thomas it means that you are breathing by two people, even by three. Uh, it depends how many breaths you're doing, uh, how deep breaths are doing. And Thomas said that he has asthma, and Thomas has actually mentioned that it's very good because uh, he helped um, the asthmatic um, breathing. Uh, problems um, to get rid of those meditations. But after two weeks of uh, uh, asthmatic uh, training with me, um, people are getting rid of those steroids medications after the training with me, after two months, or even getting the, the dose even smaller. <laughs> if you have the blocked nose, Okay, if you, and the funny fact, if you are in the control pulse on the high level, you might say goodbye to forever to your uh, blocked nose, to your uh, pneumonia, or uh, because the because the nitric oxide that is um, developed in your sinus is big enough that you won't get those infections. And uh, nitric oxidize is 95%. Um, Viagra is made 95% uh, in nitric oxidize. So ladies and gents, your libido might get even higher if you are breathing correctly. Okay, so... Um, and loads of comments that obviously this is something that people want to achieve. So I want your the score of your control pulse and um, divide in half. So for example, Thomas had 20 seconds. So I want you to, to for two and a half minutes, we take the score in half. So Peter, for example, instead of 34, don't 18, but do 15 seconds. So let's say all of us, we're going to do uh, for three minutes, we're going to do exercise and we're going to breathe in and breathe out. And for example, on Thomas uh, uh, example, he's not breathing uh, for 10 seconds and then he's breathing normally 20 seconds. So we, I'm breathing normally. 10 seconds for Thomas not breathing and 20 seconds for Thomas breathing. So for Thomas, it will at the 30 seconds will be the hold session. So for example, for Peter, 15 seconds not to breathe by 30 seconds of breathing. So one session takes 45 seconds. And for me, I have um, I have the bigger meal after uh, today, so that's why uh, my control pulse score was not the highest one, and I did the training. So it's very important to do that at the control pulse you do uh, before having any meals and um, after two hours after the the meal. And it's important that whenever you are breathing with your uh, mouth at night. The, uh, and you are hyperventilating yourself. Mm, you're not going down deep into the run uh, phase of your um, sleep. And it's obviously equals that you are tired in the morning. So I'm checking the control pulse um, in the morning. And in the afternoon, if it's very low, then uh, it means that I did uh, the, the workout too harsh or 
I had a um, bigger dinner or be it. Prosimy, ok, nie ma problemu. Więc przechodzimy teraz do ćwiczenia. So let's do the workouts. To, to ćwiczenie i załóżmy, że dzisiaj poświęcimy na to trzy minuty, ale jeżeli poświęcimy... We're gonna spend three minutes and you're gonna, if you're gonna feel that um, despite this warm-up, you got the shortness of the breath, please do this workout even five minutes. If you are running, training, running, or crossfish, and you finish up your seri, seri, and you are in your locker, you could do this training workout for four or five minutes before, and then you're going to have loads of energy. The breathing muscles slows down our the, um, um, rhythm of our heart. And after after four minutes, you could even do another session, and because you feel the power after this. And tonight, I'd say no one is going to the gym at this time, and you can do it in, in the morning. But try to do this to this warm up try to test it out tomorrow before your session or after your session a training session so let's do the with the exercise now breathe in with your nose breathe out with your nose put your relax uh, take your head straight because our airways obviously are not straight and they're squashed and you are not able to breathe properly so straight up So let's go, for example, divide your control pulse um, in a half and then don't breathe by this amount of seconds and then breathe by the amount of seconds that your control pulse was. So by 30 seconds, I had 30 seconds, so 15 seconds I wasn't breathing and 30 seconds I'm breathing. So, so remember, the nose is for breathing and your mouth is for eating. If you want to breathe with your mouth, it's only the way, uh, only in a way that you can show me the movie, uh, how you eat with your nose. So again, after 15 seconds of, after 30 seconds of breathing, now I have 15 seconds of not breathing. And again, 30 seconds again of breathing. Remember, if you have even 10 seconds of control pulse score, divided in a half, five seconds, not breathe, no breathing, and 10 seconds of breathing. We do this exercise when you have anxiety attacks or stress attacks as well, or asthma attacks. It will help you to overcome this. So this exercise gives you way more energy. So people that are doing, um, that are riding on the bicycles and so on, had to take EPO instead of this uh, nitric oxidizer that we are getting in our mm, lungs. The last theory. Okay, now 30 seconds breathing normally. 
And this, in this moment, obviously, I have a chance for you to show a small presentation, a video, how the my work with my student looks like and how the platforms of training platform looks like. And a fun fact is that if you have any question after this presentation or in during, you can write it down in a chat or in a comment of this uh, replay. So the platform looks like this. So it exactly shows you step by step what you have to do and how to devise the steps. And uh, we it exactly tells you what parts of your muscles is going to be involved in this exercise and in which way you should even grab the kettlebell. So the platform really shows you exactly what to do and how to do it. And how many sets you should do, how many uh, reps you should do, and it even counts for you. Exact movements with the step by step. It even exactly tells you the way that you should see your thumb in this exercise and the angle that you should see it. And it gives you your scores on the very beginning of your training. It shows you your training after the first series from two. It counts up uh, the clock. And this is the swing that we were talking about before the ballistic um, movement. You also have the access to a close to Facebook group. the warm obsession and the motivation as well. And the live sessions uh, that you can see as well. The information about the control pulse, the instruction of your um, breathing exercise. And it's all on the online platform of the body flow. Okay, guys, do you have any questions? Or you can just unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, we're going to discuss about the, the, the date of our the last um, session, the Q&A. Uh, and I would love to get a feedback from you guys, the people that got the training sessions from me as well, that received the PDF with the training last time as a reward. I would like you to tell me if you get any um, extension of the control paths 
like Kalina from 18, she has the 30 and she sees the, the benefits of, you know, uh, in her life. Or maybe you sleep better or maybe you don't have the craving for sugar and so on. I'm very curious of your um, reactions of your, you know, the score of birth control pulse. And the question, if you have a question, please feel free to ask in the comment or in the chat section. No questions today. Everything is straightforward. So I think it's the perfect time. Oh, there is a question. So the moment of the kind of uh, the progress of the, the asthma kind of Okay, whenever you are having, because Thomas having 20 second score of the control pulse, if we're going to look at it optimistically and we're going to think of it as the improvement of four, uh, four seconds per month. So let's say that it's four months. So after, whenever your score is on 25 seconds, you're getting rid of the asthma. When it comes to 30 seconds, and you're going to have the asthma attacks, it's, it will cause um, of the very fast uh, um, climbing or, you know, going, uh, getting wild in your bedroom, for example. Just checking if I did. So obviously, if you're gonna, if you wanna look good naked, um, the let's build up the strength, uh, and then uh, of course the you gonna have the better body shape as well. So you could see that, for example, some of the exercise are look very, very hard, and some of our in female instructors can even lift 40 kg of kettlebells, but they still have the body shape like this, not like a, a bodybuilder, for example. That's it for me. If you want to find out more, add me to your friends, look me up on Facebook, on a website, Bodyflow. And thank you so much for having me. Um, as always, it was a pleasure. And as it's the same mission that I have, obviously, um, we have the same goal. You're going to the Mars. I want to have an incredible um, strength out of this world. So let me know, uh, add me up, look me up. And I really appreciate your comments. And I'll see you soon. On our fourth life, we're gonna uh, discuss all of the previous lives and uh, check our Q and A session. Thank you so much tonight. Uh, take care and mind yourself. Bye bye.